We have a lot of news to cover in today's video, including the latest trade rumors concerning guys like Vladimir Tarasenko and Vitaly Kravstov. We also have more updated rumors regarding the Chicago Blackhawks on multiple trades they may be considering making. We have another waiver claim. Looks like we're going to have our first suspension of the season. And we have some more signings to talk about as well. All that and more coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a lot of news and rumors to cover here today. Uh, let's kick things off with some of the smaller items and then we'll work our way here into the NHL trade rumors. First up, uh, we have another waiver claim. The Washington Capitals have claimed defenseman Dennis Shalowski on waivers from the Seattle Kraken. So the Kraken have their first player uh, that's come and gone. Obviously had a very short stint there. Uh, never got into any NHL games with the Kraken and now becomes a member of of the Washington Capitals. Of course, he was formerly from the Detroit Red Wings, uh, so he'll join their club on the NHL roster here uh, today. Uh, no new players are on waivers as of now, so this time tomorrow, there definitely won't be any new uh, news regarding waivers, at least as far as players being claimed. There could be new players popped on waivers for the purpose of being assigned from there, so we'll see what happens there uh, tomorrow, of course, we had a lot of first last night in the NHL action. It was night number two on the 21-22 uh, NHL schedule. Lots of great hockey last night. Uh, we had a lot, a lot of guys getting their first career goals and some, uh, you know, very much, uh, I guess, important goals. In the case of Jonathan Duran making a significant return to the Montreal Canadiens after taking an extended time away from the team and being very open about dealing with anxiety uh, and different mental health aspects that he was working on. Uh, certainly, no matter who who you cheer for it's just a good story i'm uh, very happy for durant uh, to get back and overcome his obstacles they be courageous enough to talk about it publicly to raise awareness and then at the same time make the full return and have an impact on the game and score a big goal for his team uh that was certainly uh you know nice to see and of course alexander ovechkin continued uh his amazing career scoring two goals on opening night it was even doubtful he was even going to play He's playing without his uh, no his usual number one center, Nicholas Backstrom, and he still scores two goals, including a shorthanded goal, which passes Marcel Dion. He's now officially fifth all-time in goals. He, of course, he signed a new five-year contract, and many feel there's a really good chance, and I would concur with it, that by the end of that contract, there's a really good chance he will close in and break the all-time record for goals currently held by the great one, Wayne Gretzky. So uh, that's certainly going to be fun to watch. It was also interesting to see, of course, Wayne Gretzky now into the broadcasting game, working with TNT, actually interviewed OV last night uh, in between periods. So that was also uh, you know, a unique aspect, I think, with the new US TV deal between ESPN and TNT, uh, especially the TNT side, to me, uh, to be honest, that, I, I just really see like it was a fun broadcast. They had Charles Barkley on. It just added a new element, and I, I think they're going to do quite well down there. So that is all great to see. And, of course, we had several NHL rookies making their debut, some of which are still, like in the case of Mason McTavish, still only 18 years old, become the youngest Anaheim Duck ever to score, uh, you know, the number three overall pick from the draft. Many wonder if he's going to stick or if he's going to go back. Obviously, you can give these guys a non-game sample without burning the first year of their ELC. Um, I would suspect that the probably the best thing long-term for McTavish would be to head back to junior. He can play a huge role for Canada at the World Juniors. Maybe even be their team captain. He's a great leader. Um, hard to say if he would be or not because I'm not sure who else is all going to be on the team, but he would certainly be one of the top contenders for that role uh, and just have a monster year dominating. But he didn't look out of place at all in the NHL. Uh, scored a first goal on his first shot, first shift. Like it was, it was very quick and it was awesome to see. And he was even killing penalties, had an awesome game. Uh, so great to see Mason McTavish. Uh, have such a fantastic debut for Anaheim. Uh, Bo Byram in Colorado uh, scored a wicked goal as well for his first NHL goal. Uh, the Avalanche had a, a huge win last night against Chicago. Uh, so that was great to see. And even Hendrix Lapierre, one of the more underrated prospects due to the fact that he was injured a lot in his draft year, uh, gets into the uh, opening day lineup for the Washington Capitals. And he scored a big goal and actually had... Pretty good ice time and like didn't look out of place either. So we'll see how how much uh, playing time these guys get. But they certainly had a fantastic start to their career. So nice to see all those young guys in Duran and Ovechkin having such big nights. Now, as I mentioned, looks like we might have our first suspension of the season on our hands. There is a hearing uh, scheduled between Gabe Landeskog of the 
Avalanche and NHL player safety uh, due to a hit here on Kirby Dock of the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, to me, this was completely avoidable, uh, completely unnecessary. Uh, Landis Cox certainly uh, didn't need to do this, in my opinion. The Avalanche had dominated the game. Uh, they were, were winning by two goals late into the third period. There was only about like three or four minutes left to play. Uh, you could tell that uh, Landis Cog was not pleased with how his team was playing. Probably concerned that the the, uh, the Hawks are going to be able to, you know, maybe come back. I, I understand that uh, he was having a very physical shift. It was a chippy shift. Lots of yapping going on out there. Uh, and then, but when he hit Kirby Doc, Doc was on one knee, not too far out from the boards. Had no way to brace himself or anything completely vulnerable. And he drove him in to the boards. Uh, and it just was a really ugly, unnecessary hit. Uh, Landis Cog does have history. Uh, I would suspect this is going to be a multi-gamer. This is not going to be a... Oh, I would, I'd be surprised if it's a one-game slap on the wrist for Landis Cog. Uh, many people that I've heard talking about this hit today are saying that it's probably going to be three to four. And to be honest... I wouldn't be completely shocked if that ends up being the case. Uh, they were already without Nate McKinnon last night. Uh, they're hoping McKinnon can get back in for the second game. But now Landis Cog is likely going to be out of action for a few. I mean, I understand what he was trying to do. He was trying to set the tone. He was unhappy with his team. He's an emotional captain, uh, a very physical player. Um, you know, I don't think he went out there with any you know intent or anything like that. But it's just sometimes their emotions get the best of you and you, you cross the line. It was kind of like reminded me of Mark Shifley uh, in the uh, playoffs when he hammered Jake Evans. Like, you know, like the emotions get the best of you. Your adrenaline is just a pumping. You want to win more than anything. And you just, you cross the line. You, you should have let up and you didn't. Um, and I, I have a feeling this is not going to be a good outcome here uh, for Gabe and the Avalanche. So we'll see what player safety has to say. But I would say he's definitely being suspended for sure. Um, I'll be surprised if it's anything under three. But we'll see what happens. I'd love to know what your thoughts are in the situation down below. The big thing for me, I just the Doc had absolutely no way to defend himself and uh, brace himself for the hit or anything. So I, I really think Landis Gog, uh should have let up there. Now, uh, on to some other news. We had a pretty significant signing uh, come out uh, late last night as well. Uh, Ryan Pollock of the New York Islanders signs an eight-year extension for $50 million. That gives him an average annual value of 6.25. The first five years of the deal carries a full no-trade clause. In the last three years, carry a modified no-trade clause. Uh, that news broke last night uh, during the second intermission. Uh, Elliot Friedman brought that up on the broadcast here on Sportsnet. Um, that, to me, is a great signing. Pollock's a, a great defenseman for the New York Islanders. Uh, he and Adam Pellick uh, are really, a, you know, I would hope they're not really underrated anymore based on the, the lengthy playoff runs the Islanders have had the past couple of years. I think they've gotten a lot more attention and a lot more people have realized just how good they are. Um, I can know for myself, for example, I can, the last couple of years, I've got to see them play a lot more together uh, on these playoff runs. And it's just it's more and more evident all the time just how valuable they are. And then we just saw Pellick sign a long-term deal. Now they get Pollock. And like uh, the fact that they're both making what they are, uh, when you're seeing all these other top-end defensemen getting paid, you know, nine million bucks. Like you look at the Seth Jones contract, like look, Chicago and Seth Jones had a terrible night last night. If that contract for Jones doesn't even kick in till next year, and I guarantee you, there's already Chicago fans cringing based on how poorly Seth Jones played last night. It was not a good look for him. Not a good night at all. Um, can he be better? Sure he can. But in the case of Pollock and Pellock, they're very, very steady. Uh, they get the job done. Uh, they, uh, Pollock has one of the harder shots around. Uh, doesn't get a ton of attention. But that's just how kind of sneaky good they are. That they, you know, they defend well. They get they move the puck well. They skate well. They just do a lot of little things well so that they're almost not as noticeable. But that's how the Islanders are built. They're built with a bunch of... Uh, you know, they don't have like that, that necessarily the super high end superstar. You know, Barzell's the closest that comes to that. Uh, and he's obviously extremely uh, talented. He's extremely skilled. But they play as a team and they're like one of the best teams. But, you know, it's not like some teams that have, you know, a couple of real high end players and then the surrounding cast is debatable, you know, whereas these guys are pretty evenly 
um, stretch through the lineup. And uh, Pelican can pull, play a huge role. So to me, I'm a big fan of that contract, and it's nice to see them getting a lot of their uh, key pieces locked up here. They already have a bunch of other players on longer-term deals as well in the forward group. So that's a, a real good way to build stability. Lou Lamarillo continues his magic here, and with these extensions and everything he's done this past offseason, he was able to move Letty. He was able to move Ladd. Uh, you know, like he was pulling off some magic. He got uh, Everly to go to Seattle. Like he was able to really move a lot of dead weight. Uh, and now, like this team is probably as deep and as good as it's ever been. So, uh, Lou Lamarillo very well could be going to add another year on to his GM of the year. He's already won the last two. He's probably going for three by the looks of it. He's going to have some competition, mind you, but done a terrific job there on Long Island. Now, Elliot Freeman also reported last night that the Bruins and Charlie McAvoy appear to be getting close on announcing a big extension for the defenseman as well. Now, this one's likely going to be a lot more money than Pollock, and you could debate on where exactly that's going to go, but it's all we know at this point is uh, he said it's looking like it's going to be an eight-year deal, and it's going to be a big number. Um, somebody on the panel suggested, could it be $10 million? He said, no, not that high. It'll be a single digit. But I'm going to say that it's going to be somewhere around that Jones and Hamilton money. Um, it might not hit nine, but it's going to be in the high eights would be my guess. Uh, again, this is a situation where he's a terrific defenseman, uh, obviously extremely valuable to that team. But when you look at some of the other contracts that we just talked about, you know, it makes you wonder on how is the best way to build that team. But the Bruins have been really good about, um, you know, making sure everything kind of stays pretty even. Uh, you know, look at the contract. Like, uh, Krejci was the highest paid player for a while at seven uh, and change. And uh, they don't really let too many guys get around that Bergeron, Marchand uh, amount. And then Pasternak comes in. He deserved that. So I'll be surprised if they go too high, but at some point, I guess everybody deserves raises. So we'll see where it goes. But McAvoy uh, doing an eight-year deal with the Bruins is close and could be announced here just about any time. We also did see another official signing. The Arizona Coyotes have signed themselves a prospect goaltender, Anson Thornton, uh, who was an OHL goaltender from the Sarnia Sting. Um, he's not drafted, though, uh, but he was draft eligible this past year. Didn't get picked. They invited him to camp on an amateur tryout. Uh, didn't do too badly, and they've signed him to his ELC. So he'll go back with the Sarnia Sting uh, and play junior probably for another one to two years because he's still, I don't even think he's 19 years old yet. Um, so he'll still have some junior eligibility time before he makes the jump to uh, see what level of pro hockey he'll start at beyond junior. Quick update as well on the Brady Kachuk signing that we announced and talked about earlier. Of course, that was huge news for the Ottawa Senators to get this done, especially on the... Uh, day of the first game of the season, Pierre Dorian did say that he'd be signed by the start of the season, and today is the start of the season. So I know they had a face-to-face -face meeting uh, between uh, Brady's agents uh, and Dorian and his staff all got together uh, recently on the weekend and tried to hammer stuff out. And obviously over the last day or so, I've been putting the finishing touches on it, but there is no signing bonuses in, the, in this deal. Of course, he did get the no move in the UFA year, so the final uh, final three years of the contract, but no signing bonuses. He is going to be at their game tonight against the Toronto Maple Leafs. It is expected. It's not confirmed by the team, but it's believed he's going to be named captain. Uh, I would suspect that very well likely happens tonight as well at the game. I'm not sure if they do a pregame ceremony, maybe when they announce the team, because every team usually on their home opener usually announces and brings all the players out. Um, maybe they do it that way. I don't know. But uh, even though he's not expected to play, there are some saying, what if he shows up in the rank, ready to go, and says the DJ Smith, put me in. How do you tell this guy no, right? I mean, he's such the heartbeat of your team. The only problem is, is you know, with the lack of uh, training and practicing, you just don't want him to see him get hurt. That's the problem with some of these players jumping in right away after signing without going through a little bit more time uh, to train. As you, you get an injury right off the bat, end up out two, three, four weeks, and then they're set back again after just getting everything done. So you got to be careful with that. But uh, we'll see if there's any dramatics at the game this evening. Now, before we jump into the trade rumor section of the video, though, we do need to pause for a moment and acknowledge our channel sponsor, Manscaped. Top Shelf Hockey is proud to be sponsored by Manscaped. And guess what? Hockey fans are buzzing because hockey is back. Want to know what else is buzzing? The Lawnmower 4.0 from our friends at Manscaped, who are the global leaders in male grooming, trusted by over 2 million men 
worldwide. I highly recommend the Performance Package 4.0, which includes their new state-of-the-art lawnmower 4.0, as well as some other great features. The lawnmower itself has a 7,000 RPM motor, a new multifunction switch that can engage as a travel lock, gives you the ability to turn on an LED spotlight as well for a more precise shave. Uh, also, as I've mentioned on numerous occasions before, Manscaped is about much more than just a trimmer. They have everything, all aspects covered and male grooming including some great formulations like their brand new ultra premium body wash to keep you smelling great all day long it's certainly a big hit here i absolutely love it they also have other exfoliators and gels to keep all aspects of your grooming needs covered i highly recommend you check out manscape.com use promo code tsh for 20 percent off and free shipping that's 20 percent off and free shipping at manscape.com using promo code tsh all right, so thanks very much for watching our promotional content. I do greatly appreciate it. Uh, on to the trade talk of the day. I want to update a couple of things on, uh, first up, Vitaly Kravtsov, the New York Rangers. Uh, we did get word from a couple of NHL insiders saying that the uh, demotion of Kravtsov to the American Hockey League, some were wondering if it had to do with the fact that he was waivers exempt, so he could go down without needing waivers. Um, but a guy like Libor Hayek, who they're apparently also looking to trade because they have too many defensemen, uh, he needs waivers to go down, but they don't want to put him on waivers because they feel they're likely to lose him. So they're trying to keep him on the NHL roster. They're trying to uh, figure out a trade for him to go somewhere else. Uh, and in the interim, some thought that maybe this was a way for them to keep Hayek on the roster and move Kravtsov down. It's just kind of a juggling situation. But there are others saying that that's actually not the case. Uh, and they've even confirmed this through head coach Gerard Gallant that they just didn't feel that Vitaly Kravtsov had a strong enough camp. He dealt with a little bit of an injury for a little bit there too, so that didn't help matters. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, Glant just felt that he was not ready to be a full-time member of the NHL roster, and he needed some more time to develop. Now, of course, uh, that doesn't obviously sit well with Kravtsov, who feels he's ready. And it's basically, like I said, they've already granted permission to his agent, Dan Milstein, a gold star, to uh, try to find and facilitate a trade. So they're working on that. Now, originally, we had said that the precedent can kind of been set before with their previous first rounder they ran into this problem with, uh, Leas Anderson, who was traded for a second round pick that it likely would be a comparable um, return, but now Darren Dreger of TSN was saying that if uh, essentially that Kravstoff's willing to play in the American Hockey League for another franchise. I'm not sure why he would for another one, but not the Rangers. I guess he just doesn't see a spot for himself there. I don't know. Um, and at the end of the day, uh, they, they might be looking for more of an active roster player who can play top six, top nine in return. So it may not actually be a second round pick. Um, I, I guess we'll see. I'm not really sure how that's all going to work out. Many felt when they traded Buchnevich in the offseason that they were essentially making room for Kravstoff, and that just never came to be. So it's a little bit confusing, as I mentioned. It's not really viewed upon as great asset management by the Rangers, but at the same time, it's not their fault if he's not ready, right? So we'll, we'll see where this goes, but he likely is done in New York. Uh, with the Chicago Blackhawks, of course, we talked about Dylan Strom likely being moved sometime soon. That's still the case. But there's also word today from Frank Zaravalli uh, of DailyFaceOff.com indicating that the Hawks are actively shopping the contract of Andrew Shaw, who, of course, is never going to play again. He's already announced he's basically retired. This is the final year of the deal. And essentially, it's a, a LTIR situation, which is surprising for them to be shopping that. I guess they feel if they move Strom and can have, make some roster adjustments, they won't need to be in LTIR. Um but obviously another team that might already be in that that wants some more flexibility could possibly take that on. Uh, so look, look for that to possibly be in play here. It might actually happen sooner than later. If you look through cap friendly, look at all the teams near the top of the list that are already over the cap by the most. You're looking at like Montreal, Tampa, teams like that. Uh, you know, there's plenty of them out there that are already in LTIR. So by at least a little bit, right? That that Shaw contract could prove valuable as the year goes along. And lastly, I want to touch on Blues forward Vladimir Tarasenko. Uh, Sarah Valley, again, is also reporting that even though both sides have played nice and both sides have said all the right things, that it's still believed that Vladimir Tarasenko very much still wants to trade out of St. Louis, and the Blues are certainly very much open to doing that and accommodating, but it's just been challenging to do. So they're kind of hoping at this point that they can start the season 
Tarasenko can hopefully show other teams that he is healthy. Their shoulder looks good. Hopefully he plays well, can score a few goals, and generate some interest. And if that's the case, that we very well could still see a Tarasenko deal facilitated sometime early in the season. It really boils down to how he looks, which is going to be you know, difficult because if he plays really well, the Blues are maybe they're not going to have second thoughts on this, right? But if he really wants out and he's if his mind hasn't changed any, even if theirs has, then it might be challenging to change that mind and and uh, kind of you know repair the relationship. Uh, but there's been reports about Tarasenko as much as a year ago being unhappy over O'Reilly being named captain, and uh, then of course like over the uh, the way the shoulders have been handled with the team doctors and everything like that. It just it seems like he really wanted out and really wanted a fresh start. Never got it, largely due to the fact of the contract and the reluctance for other teams to take on that risk. But if he can show them that he's healthy, ready to go, then don't be surprised if a Tarasenko trade does happen somewhat here early in the season. At least that's what Sarah Valley feels as of today. So that is all your news and notes for now. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the latest news, rumors, and analysis on all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.